please welcome the MC for today's ceremony honoring Jerry Coleman, Jerry's longtime radio partner, Ted Leitner. Thank you so much. Hot day, but a special day for a very, very special man, as I'm sure if you've listened to the broadcast all these decades, you know by now. An amazing record. And we travel. We travel and see these statues at different parks for Willie Stargell in Pittsburgh, for Willie Mays in San Francisco, for Stan Musil in St. Louis, and broadcasters Jack Buck in St. Louis, and uh, Harry Carey in Chicago, and just this last month for Bob Euchre in Milwaukee. And I mean no disrespect to any of those in saying that this man and his credentials, and I say this not just as a friend or a Padre broadcaster, his credentials go beyond those people. I mean, we're talking 40 years with the Padres, 70 years in Major League Baseball, first as a player, and I know you listen to the broadcast and he would put himself down, but I'm telling you, a marvelous player on some of the greatest Yankee teams of all time. A player, an executive, then a broadcaster. And actually with the Padres was a broadcaster and executive for many years as broadcaster and director of broadcasting. He was my boss for years. I would ask him for raises. He would say, yes. If I didn't already love him, I would have loved him for that. All those credentials. But there's more. And this is what separates him from literally anyone in American sports history. Because no athlete ever, this is not my opinion, this is as his old manager, Keisha Stengel, used to say, is a fact, you could look it up. No athlete in American sport has ever voluntarily left his sport, not once, but twice, to enlist and fight against his country's enemies overseas. And when we first began together, people would ask me, why do you call him Colonel? They thought it was kind of like a nickname or some honorary degree of some sort, like Colonel Sanders. And I would tell them, no, 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 this is not an honorary degree. This was a degree, a title forged in combat, flying the dauntless dive bomber over South Pacific's skies and the Corsair in South and North Korea. This is an official title bespowed, bespowed, bestowed upon him, and that title is Lieutenant Colonel, United States Marine Corps retired. I give you, ladies and gentlemen, with his wife Maggie, Mr. Jerry Coleman. Let me introduce members of Jerry's family that are with him today. Jerry's daughter, Diane Long, with her husband, Mark. Daughter, Chelsea Comley. Her boyfriend, Shay Jordan. Jerry's grandkids are here. That is Christopher Urbano, Urbano, Courtney Hammett, and Courtney's husband, Jim. Oh, and by the way, 
Courtney has Jerry's great-granddaughter, Sophia. Hi, Sophia. That's some great-grandfather you've got. Maggie's brother, Michael Hay, his sister-in-law, Ann Jordan, his nieces, Megan Shuck, Anna Sorensen, and husband, Nils. And all you people asked me before the game, before the ceremonies, I'll ask him now, Jerry, what'd you do today? We're done. We're done. We're done. I'll ask him that and also say this. Yesterday, a belated happy birthday. He was 88 years of age yesterday. Some other dignitaries with us here today. It was a pleasure and a privilege for Jerry and I to work with him and for him. Former Padre President Dick Freeman. His ultimate successor, and I thank him because this ceremony and that statue was his doing, as was Trevor Hoffman's retirement ceremony last year. Padre President and Chief Executive Officer Tom Garfinkel. You saw the opening introduction of the new ownership group, and you saw this man get emotional because other Padre owners, in my opinion, have certainly come to love the Padres, but he's been here so long, he begins his stewardship already loving this baseball team. Would you welcome new executive chairman, Mr. Ron Fowler. The ball club was in Atlanta, and I spoke to Don Sutton, the Hall of Fame pitcher, when all the rumors were circling about circulating about who would own the club. And I said, what about those guys? And he said, you have no idea. You tell those people in San Diego you're getting baseball royalty, that no family ever ran a ball club in a finer, classier fashion, and winning was just as important as everything else. With that in mind, I will deliver that message from Don Sutton and introduce to you here at Petco the new ownership group with Peter and Tom Seidler and Kevin O'Malley. I will also say this. In all my decades here, along with Jerry, I've never seen a team quite like this one. And I say this to every coach and every player over there, that after this kind of a start, losing that many players, I am prouder of these guys, or as proud of these guys, than any championship club in Padre history. Unbelievable. And I introduce to you the skipper of that organization, Mr. Buddy Black, right here. First award of the day is a proclamation by our friend Jerry Sanders, mayor of the city of San Diego, who has proclaimed today, September 15, 2012, as Jerry Coleman Day in the city of San Diego. This is an amazing story that was chronicled a couple of years ago in the San Francisco Chronicle, no pun intended. Three kids on the sand lots and playgrounds of San Francisco. Dear friends, they grow up, all three are drafted by the New York Yankees. All three eventually make the major leagues and are teammates on the New York Yankees. It is an amazing, amazing story. One of them started with Jerry at his first minor league stop in Wellsville, New York in 1942. Jerry, 1942. They have known each other since they were 10 years old. Former Yankee catcher. You thought Yogi could play. This guy, Yogi could never throw like this guy or catch like this guy. Here's Charlie Silvera. <laughs> Another member of the group, the Troika. Childhood friends all the way teammates on the Yankees. He's an amazing overachiever, this guy. A great baseball player, later president of the American League, and a medical doctor. Here's Bobby Brown. Another Yankee teammate, 
in New York from 1952 to 1956 when Jerry came back from Korea. He lives in Oceanside now. Welcome, Irv Norin. A San Diego native, the pride of Point Loma High School, and pitched the darndest, most amazing performance in the postseason in Major League Baseball history. Game five of the 1956 World Series in Yankee Stadium in front of 60,000, he pitches a perfect game. He is Don Larson. So he goes to Wellsville in 1942. You know what he told me off the air? I was just biding my time. I didn't care. I was just waiting to turn 18 so I could fly back to San Francisco and enlist in the Marine Corps. That's what he was doing his first year in minor league baseball. Two distinguished flying crosses at 120 missions. Later, inducted into the Marine Corps Sports Hall of Fame and honored when he came back from Korea at his first Jerry Coleman Day in Yankee Stadium making a presentation that day was Admiral William Bull Halsey, the fourth and last fleet admiral of the United States Navy. Jerry never mentioned it to me. I found that a couple of years ago, but it made me so incredibly proud, as it does now, to again honor him and welcome the commanding officer of the 1st Marine Division, Major General Ronald Bailey. From a broadcast career, I mentioned his 40 years with the Padres. I had the privilege of sitting alongside him for 33 of that. You have no idea. Having been a kid in New York watching the Yankees on Channel 11, I'm watching him play second base, and now I get to sit next to him and soak it up and learn, not just from someone who knows baseball, but someone who lived it. And I hope, hope you could impart from the broadcast how much respect I have for him then and now, and hope that respect will be imparted again here this afternoon. I will direct your attention after the introduction of Gen General Bailey to center field and welcome Marine Band San Diego, also in honor of General Bailey's attendance and Colonel Coleman's and the playing of the Marine Hymn. Marine Band, San Diego.
Jerry's broadcast career, oh, the 2005 award for the National Radio Hall of Fame. That covers sports and non-sports. Induction into the Cooperstown Hall of Fame, the Ford C. Frick Award in the broadcast wing. So speaking of broadcasters, here's some of the broadcasters who, were like me, were lucky enough to sit alongside him. Beginning with his first partner in 1972, he and Jerry taught me more baseball than anybody. They've forgotten more than I know. Here's Bob Chandler. Also current broadcasters, Juan Avila, Eduardo Ortega, Andy Mazur, Bob Scanlon, Mark Grant, and Dick Enberg. Jerry is in the Padre Hall of Fame, of course, and so there are a couple of Hall of Famers here that would like to say hi to him. Number 35, he put this franchise on the map. Here's Randy Jones. When last we gathered, we retired. That number 51 behind me at center field. Here's the great Trevor Huffman. <laughs> Trevor here to honor Jerry, and in a couple of years, Jerry and I will be in Cooperstown when Trevor will be inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame. I can't wait, I can't wait. Another Padre Hall of Famer and Baseball Hall of Famer. And Lord, he's gone through enough. I wish him, please, good health. He's doing well. Thank God. He is up in the radio booth. Ladies and gentlemen, Tony Gwynn's going to hang a star on this baby. I remember the HBO series Band of Brothers with their captain, Captain Winters, an amazing group in World War II. And in the final episode, the real Captain Winters was interviewed. And he said his grandson had seen him on television and said, Grandpa, were you a hero in the war? And he said, no, son, but I served with a bunch of them. That's what this man has told me in that booth and on those planes and on that bus for many, many years, but I disagree with him because the job he did, the courage he and his men showed kept others from paying the ultimate sacrifice. Those are the ones he said are the heroes, but I disagree with him. He, by saving other lives and fighting for his country, is my and our hero. Ladies and gentlemen, Colonel Jerry Coleman. Thank you very much. You know, Ted Leitner lies a lot, and I found out after 33 years. But I love him dearly, I must tell you. It's great to work with someone that you enjoy, that you respect, and can get through the game. More importantly, I think the greatest thing that ever happened to me was landing in San Diego. I don't think I know it was. Not only because of the city or where it's located, but because of you fans who make it worthwhile. Thank you very much through the years. I frankly don't know where to begin after 70 years. I don't remember 70 years ago. But I do know that coming here was the greatest thing that ever happened to me. And one thing that has been even more blissful as time goes on is the manager and coaching staff of this current San Diego ball club. You have to go back to the early months of the year 2012. Disaster. They're going to lose 100 ball games didn't happen because Bud Black and his staff 
pulled things together and gave you an exciting ball club. I don't know where they're going to finish, but they're so much better now than they were in the beginning. I interview Bud every day when the team is home. I don't disagree with him. Yes, I do. But we have fun analyzing what's going on on the ball field. And for a man who brought this club back from nowhere, Bud Black may be the most intellectual manager I've ever seen or ever heard of. And I play for some pretty good ones. I'm not going to stay here and belabor. I start getting tears in my eyes when I think of what went on in the past. But you know what's more important and the most important thing in baseball? In 1953, the Yankee team that I played for, maybe it was 1954, I'm not sure, we won 103 games. Were we happy? No. Cleveland won 110, and all we could say was, we lost. And that's the key to baseball. Not having a good year, making sure that you win, getting the best that you can give. And that's what Bud Black and his crew has done with these players. Not a new penny of them are going to be in the Hall of Fame, but what they are, are players who want to win. And that, to me, is the most important thing of all. I've had a chance to work with many broadcasters. For 22 years, I never saw my wife. At Friday night, I was at the airport, had a flight all the way to Chicago. From Chicago was Toronto, Montreal, Boston, Baltimore, Atlanta. Play the game that day and back this next day. And that went on for 22 years. And I've got to give my wife much credit for keeping things rolling at a time when I was never there. <laughs> On top of that, baseball is a very profitable ball game for the players. There's no question about it. But the wives, remember this, are raising children by themselves, alone most of the time, and in spring training occasionally don't see their husbands for two months. So these women, although it looks glamorous, can be very tenacious on the ability to stay alive. In any event, I'm thrilled to death to be here. I couldn't find a better place to find my days as in San Diego, garden spot of the universe. The first time I was here was 1943. I went through Miramar. They shipped me overseas. I was 19 years old, but I thought that's the way it should be. And to this day, the greatest town in the United States for baseball, one of the finest stadiums in the United States is right here at Petco Park. Enjoy it, have some fun, and keep rooting for those guys that are giving their best. Thank you so much. To the main event, once again, for the unveiling, as it were, of this statue that will be out there, literally, for the ages, as Jerry would say, and forever. Once again, welcome Executive Chairman Ron Fowler. Jerry, on behalf of present and past owners, present and past management, and present and past employees. I'd like to salute you on not just one, but three careers totaling 70 years. Wow.
So I encourage all of you to look at the video bowl board. And we will count down from five to unveil the statue. Five, four, three, two, one. Tom? It's perfect. It is perfect. And unveiled by a Marine Honor Guard. It doesn't get any better than that. That is Jerry's 1952 Marine flight suit that is pictured on his statue. Because, like we said, more, way more than just a broadcaster. Fans of Padres, as you know, are proud to honor the men of the armed forces and the women like Jerry and General Bailey here today. We'd like to recognize all active duty members, veterans, military families in the crowd for your outstanding service. Would you please stand now? And we thank you. Please remain standing and remove your caps. Veterans in the crowd saluting our flag. The Marine Corps Air Station Miramar Color Guard presenting our colors and the Marine Band playing the national anthem of the United States of America. Ladies and gentlemen, I thank you for being here. Before we leave, I would like one more time, if you would, for my partner and truly the voice of the San Diego Padres of all time, Mr. Jerry Coleman. his Marine buddies at Marine Corps Air Station Miramar from the F-14s of VF DMF A314, VMF AT-101. Thank you all for being here. I direct your attention to the video board for one final, final salute to Gerald Francis Coleman, Jr.
Howdy, Jerry Coleman here, Qualcomm Stadium, San Diego, California, the New York Yankees, San Diego Padres, game four of the 1998 World Series. That's your real Mr. Padre, Jerry Coleman. And, uh, and I love Jerry because Jerry was always honest with me when I first came up. I used to pick his brain and ask him about stuff. And he was always gracious with his time to help me understand stuff. And, uh, and again, you're talking about a guy who, you know, loves the game, believes it should be played the right way. And Jerry really helped me understand the right way. Amazing man, Jerry. I, 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 I really uh, uh, couldn't respect anybody more than you and everything you've accomplished. Uh, always one of the, the great gentlemen of the game. And, and I was always so happy that he won the, the Ford C. Frick Award for the broadcasters at the Hall of Fame. Uh, but also a true American hero, two different wars. And uh, called right out of the prime of his baseball career into a second war. And he went uncomplaining and doesn't complain about it to this day. But it may well have cut short his baseball career. It certainly didn't help it any. Uh, so Jerry Coleman, for me, uh, classed up the whole Hall of Fame as well as the Ford C. Frick Award when he went in. And for that, I'm always going to be eternally grateful. He taught me more than about baseball. He taught me about being a man. He taught me about being a father. He taught me about humor. He taught me about not taking yourself so serious. A library of knowledge. Uh, he's watched the game change so many different times. Maybe not the game itself, but the people playing it. And he's never lost his love, and he's never lost his compassion for it. Jerry Coleman digs in a little deeper and keeps on swinging. Much to the Cleveland pitcher's dismay. Well, I, I wish I could go back in the time machine and, and watch the Colonel play second base. I mean, we have still photos, and we have some action shots of him when he was a Yankee, and his, his footwork around the bag and sliding into the bag and, you know, the swing. I, I, obviously, Jerry does not give himself enough credit for the type of player that he was. He was a darn good player, from what I hear. Um, but and he was surrounded by greats as well. And I think that even made him better, and I think he would agree with that. But I wish I can go back in time and uh, really get the chance to see him swing the bat and turn the double play. And we're lucky to have had him here with the Padres for as long as we have, because to me, can't have the Padres without Jerry Cole. And, uh, uh, and he's, he's an institution here, and I love him. He's, 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 so Jerry's like family, so. Uh, and this is, this day or, you know, celebrating anything Jerry Coleman has done would be well worth it. Well, I first worked with the Colonel more than 40 years ago, and the beauty about Jerry Coleman is that through all of these years, decades, he hasn't changed. He doesn't even get old. And for all of us that have been fortunate enough to be close to Jerry Coleman, and rub shoulders with his greatness, well, we can only hang a star on that. Hi, everybody. This is Vin Scully up in Los Angeles saluting one of my favorite people in all of baseball. Growing up in New York, I was able to see Jerry play with the New York Yankees, and considering the fact that he's been with the Padres for 40 years, I have been able to see him and watch him for over 60 years. And for Jerry Coleman, I salute him not just as a Hall of Fame broadcaster, but far more as a dedicated human being, a great patriot. I will never forget all of the things he did in the wars. And so, Jerry, I am privileged to take a few minutes out of my life to salute you. I love you, man. I love you. 40 years with the Padres, and I know you're not gonna you're not gonna let people know how important you are to this organization, so I'll do it for you. Jerry is an institution. And today is your day. Celebrate it. Enjoy it. Try to enjoy it, Jerry, because we all love you. Thanks, Jerry. And now let's meet our ceremonial first pitch honoree. Please welcome to the mound Jerry Coleman's daughter, Chelsea Coleman, and granddaughter, Courtney Hammond. Put it right in there, ladies. 